Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to see how to save data to an uh, iOS device and then load that same data up later uh, for use in the application. There are many different ways to save data and we're going to, to the device, we're going to use this probably the simplest way to do that, which is using the NS user defaults class. This class saves simple key value uh, uh, data to the device uh, in a plist file and the magic of doing it this way is you don't need to know where that file is on the device uh, that's all handled by the operating system for you. It's meant for very saving very simple bits of data as the class suggests that user defaults or user preferences for an application. In this case we're going to create a simple application that um, the background color can either be red, yellow, or green and the user can change the color using a segmented control and then when they uh, they can choose to save their preference of what color they like in the application and then when the application is relaunched later what they save will be uh, automatically loaded for them. So I'm starting off with a simple uh, single view project uh, using automatic reference counting and uh, you automatic reference counting and wow, the other one the uh, storyboarding and I'm going to start off by going to the storyboard here and on the storyboard I'm going to add that segmented control and we get to see how to use segmented controls as well in this, in this tutorial. So I got the segmented control down here and we're just going to drag that over to the R view and center it in the view. Leave some space below that because we're going to add a button later uh, below the segmented control. I'm going to add, add a third segment to that control and then we're going to name each one of those segments. Um, so the first segment here, I'm going to have it called red, and adjusting the title then will change it on the segment to control itself. Uh, then the second segment will be yellow. And the third segment will be green. Now notice that the segment control, uh, each se segment is a uh, it's a zero base segment so that uh, the selected segment will be either zero, one, or two, uh, not one, two, or three. And you can see that here I can uh, set whether the segment is selected or not um, in the attributes panel as well. So now we also need to change the, if I got red selected as my initial segment, then I'm going to change the view to be, uh, initial view to be red as well. And, uh, that's easy to do from this panel over here. Now what I want to, want to do is so that when they select a different se segment, we'll change the, that background color. So I'm going to need to define uh, some variables for the segment control as well as the background view and a method to cause that change to occur. I'm going to use a little shortcut to do that by switching over to the uh, assistance editor here. And by clicking on this, it allows me to have both my storyboard and the view controller dot h file open side by side. I'm going to ha hide some of my panels here to get some more screen space. So on the left hand side here I've got my storyboard. On the right hand side I've got my uh, initial, my uh, interface file for the view controller. And if you don't have the right one you can select it there from the jump bar. Uh, you want your view controller dot h. And then all I need to do to d declare a property for this segment control is control select the control and then control drag uh, from the control over to my interface file this menu will pop up and I can set the attributes there. I'm going to call this my color control and make sure it's an outlet. Uh, view controller is right, uh, storage is strong, it says segment control and I'll just press connect and that creates a property declaration for that uh, control. I also need a property declaration for the background view as well so I can set that programmatically. So I'm going to select the view and drag over to my interface file We'll call this color view. And then finally, I'm also going to need a method to fire when I change the value of that segment control. So again, I'm going to select that segment control and control drag over to my uh, interface file. But this time, instead of an outlet, I'm going to set an it as an action, which will create an IB action declaration. The action I'll call change color. And I won't need any arguments passed to that. So we'll do it on the value changed, and then I will um, make sure it's an action, and then I will uh, not pass any arguments. And that creates my method declaration as well. The nice 
thing about doing it this way then is I can switch back to my standard editor and I'll bring back my panels as well. And then as I look through the files, that my uh, other files with this application, I can see in the view controller.h file, of course, I've got the property declarations I just made. Um, I've got uh, my IB outlets and IB action for the method. And then in the implementation, I've got my synthesized statements already created for me. And I should also have a method, which is actually going to be, uh, I believe, let me find it here with the jump bar. Yeah, all the way down at the bottom. I'm going to change color method. I don't like it at the bottom here, so I'm going to cut and paste that at the top here, just so it's easier for me to deal with. And uh, open up some space inside that method. Now I want the col the color to change based on what selection what uh, index was selected in the color control, and that's going to be a perfect use of the switch case statement. So here I'm going to begin to type to start typing switch, and I can select a switch autocomplete there, and it'll, it'll stub out the switch case statement for me. And then the uh, expression I want to test is the color view dot selected say. Uh, no, sorry, color control is what I want. Uh, selected segment index. And that'll be an integer, either 0, 1, or 2, like we talked about earlier. So in the first case, I'm going to set it up for if they it's 0, or they, they selected the red color, and then I need to change my back color, background color to be red. So I'll call my color view, and then from the segment control, there's a bunch of stuff I can set. I'm going to, uh, from the view, sorry, I'm going to set the background color. And I'll need a UI color, and we just use the red color. So if it's zero, it'll set the background color to red. I need two other cases, in case it's one or two, uh, for yellow and green. So I'm just going to copy my first case statement and paste it in this method twice more. Uh, And in case it's one, I'm going to set the color to yellow. And if it's two, I'll set the background color to green. So now I can test the application in the simulator. And we should be able to click on that segment to control and see the background color change. So it's initially red, and if I click on yellow, go yellow, green. So our segment control, it's pretty easy to use. I'm um, just looking for the index of what uh, segment was selected and setting that. Now the next thing I want to do is make it so that the user can defi define which color they prefer. And when they relaunch the application, that will be the color that, that automatically shows up. To do that, I'm going to need a button to set to trigger that setting of defaults. So I'm going to drag a button below my color control, my segment control, and I'll label that button "Save as Default." And then I'll need a method to fire uh, to save their selected color as their default color, as their preferred color. So I'm going to switch back to the assistant editor here and hide it in those panels like we did before. I can control drag for my button to my interface file and I'm going to call the method save default color. Uh, make sure that's an IB action and I don't need any arguments this time either. And that'll create the method and make the connections for me between that method and the, and the button automatically for me. And then I can switch over to my implementation file and fortunately that method's right below the last method I added. So inside this method, I'm going to first, I will need, this is where we're going to use the NS default class, and NS user defaults, but I'm first going to declare an integer uh, to capture the user selection. So I'll call that the default color integer. And just like before, I'll use my color control dot selected segment index to get the integer of this selected segment. And now I'll use the NS user defaults class. So first I need to create a pointer to uh, the singleton of the class. And I can do that by just typing out the NS user defaults. 
class and I'll call it the pointer user defaults and then I just uh, really code a class with the uh, standard user defaults method. So now I've got a pointer to the user defaults and all I need to do then is set the key value pair I want to save. There's a bunch of things I can say, set for the user defaults class. I can uh, set a URL. You can see I can uh, just set values for keys, but if I look up here, I, I'll see set float, set integer, set bool, uh, set object as well. In my case, because I'm working with an integer, I'm going to set integer, and I'll pass in the integer that I just uh, created there with the user default color integer. And then for key, and I'll call the key uh, default color. I'll need this key later when I uh, load the uh, user defaults. And finally, I call user defaults synchronize, and that does the equivalent of saving uh, to the plist file for me. Uh, then, just to make sure that uh, this method is f actually firing correctly, I'm going to create an nslog statement and uh, log it sent to the console what exactly what integer was was saved. Uh, to my user default, so I'm making sure that everything's working correctly. So I'll set as, and then pass in my default color integer. Okay, so we're saving the user defaults, but what we need to do then is uh, when the application loads, I want to go to my user defaults, pull out that uh, bit of data, and then use that in my application to set the right color to the background. I'm going to do that in the view did load method. So right before this helpful comment string, I'm going to then go ahead and make another reference to my NS user defaults class. And it'll be user NS user defaults, standard user defaults. And then uh I'll need to set an integer, and the value of the integer I'll get from my user defaults. So the integer will be default color integer, and then I can go user defaults integer for key, and then tell what key I want. I want that default color key that I said earlier. Now I need to. I want to use this integer. The first thing I want to do is uh, set the segment control to have the uh, right segment selected according to what their preference was. So, on my segment control, I can call the uh, set selected segment index and pass it that integer I just set. And then I want to change the background color to according to what integer we have. Um, red for zero, yellow and green appropriately. So again I'll use a switch statement. The expression I'll test for is that is my default color integer. And then everything else inside this case statement is pretty much the same as what I used earlier. Um, so I'm just going to copy out the case statements from the earlier switch statement and paste them in this one to save some time. So zero will be red, one will be yellow, two will be green. And now everything should be set to use. I've gone to my user defaults, I've pulled out my default color integer, I'm using that to set the, in, in, uh, the index of the sec segment control as well as set the right color. So let's test this in the application. And we'll see that I can select a different color. I'll set to yellow. I'll save yellow as my default. I'll set it to green before I close the application. Green was the last color I picked, but now when I relaunch the application, uh, yellow pops up because that's when I set it as, as the default color. So I'm correctly setting the user default and then reading.